how to create some spot color artwork for your single color, single station startup kit. Okay, so today, like I said, we're going to be dealing with basic spot color artwork because it's the simplest to start with and that is the type of artwork you're going to need for your one color screen printing press. Okay, now you're going to need a couple of things. You're going to need a computer of sorts. A laptop will work if it has enough memory. It's important to note that vector art programs can be processor intense. So um, it's a good idea to use a computer that has a lot of RAM and uh, you know big processors so that you can handle the imagery. All right. Um, there are a couple different programs you can use, and I mentioned Vector Art. Vector Art is the standard for screen printing. And basically all it means is, uh, I'm not an expert at this, but vector art is put together on your computer using mathematical algorithms, math, numbers, and, and you know, graphing or some type of mathematical situation so that you can actually enlarge or shrink vector art without any resolution loss whatsoever. Okay, so that's why we work with vector art because we can blow it up, we can shrink it down, we can move it around, we can distort it, we can stretch it, we can do all kinds of things to vector artwork that won't affect the resolution of the artwork. Contrastingly, if you're working, you know, a customer brings you a low resolution JPEG or uh, a bitmap, those files, you know, are going to be difficult to work with. So you can do one of two things. You can either ask the customer for a higher resolution file or you can have it converted to vector. And there are plenty of services online to do that. All right, now, so you need a computer that has enough memory, RAM, and processing power to handle Illustrator or Corel Draw or whatever vector art software you want to use. So you're going to need the software, you're going to need a computer, and then you're going to need an inkjet printer. Okay, now, most of the time Epson will dominate the market for outputting inkjet film positives for screen printing. All right, but that doesn't mean you can't use other printers. You can, but the issue that you'll have to check with is whether or not your printer can handle clear media. Okay, so if you have an HP, like this is a little HP, um, you know, some Canons and other kinds of printers can't actually feed a piece of clear media successfully. Okay, so it requires a white strip down the side and they make particular films for those types of printers. But for inkjet film positives where you're going to buy this from a screen printing supply, um, it's going to be clear. So you're going to need a printer that can handle clear media. Most Epsons should do that. And one of the most common and economically practical Epson printers was the Epson 1400, which is discontinued. So if you find them now, new or used, they're actually expensive. And, uh, you know, if you can get a refurbished one, that's good. But you don't, you know, you could use a different Epson, like maybe a Workforce 1100 or something like that. All right. But an Epson printer is a good choice because in the future, when you need to do more complicated artwork, an Epson printer will be compatible with other software that you're going to need in the future if you go all out and all the way with this, okay? And another thing to remember, the size of your printer is going to dictate the size of the film you can print. For instance, this printer wouldn't be able to print either of these two pages because this is 11 by 17, this is 13 by 19. So, this printer couldn't even print these two pieces. I can only print 8.5 by 11 on this printer. So, when you're making your decision to buy a printer, keep that in mind. It's a sheet-fed printer. Well, what, how big can it take? What, what size sheet can it take? Normally, 13 by 19 is the biggest size that you're going to be able to get. Okay? For sheet film. Roll film is different. And it is, you know, inkjet film is available in roll film, but for you, for your little startup kit, sheet film will be fine. And it's going to be available in 8.5 by 11, 11 by 17, 13 by 19, you know, stuff like that, okay? You might even find 11, 14 or something, you know. So the standard sizes of, of paper and stuff you'll find these sheets in. 
Now, one more thing before we actually look at the computer and look at a little bit of artwork creation is there are two kinds of inkjet film that you'll find. One is a non-waterproof, which is clear, kind of like this, and the other one is waterproof, which is foggy, like this. Take a close-up look at these two. Okay, so quickly check out the two different types of inkjet film that you'll find. First of all is the non-waterproof. This is not waterproof and it's a lot clearer. You can see that, okay? If we put it in front of a screen, you can see that you can see through it pretty well, probably, right? So it's pretty clear. So this is non-waterproof inkjet film. Now, waterproof inkjet film is much different and it's very cloudy, okay? So there you can see it's hazy, it's cloudy. You see that, okay? So this is waterproof inkjet film and you want to work with waterproof inkjet film. It's really going to give you the best film positive that you can get with an inkjet printer. Okay, so you can see that the waterproof inkjet film is very hazy and cloudy, okay? And the non-waterproof inkjet film is relatively clear. Now, <laughs> there's another thing you have to remember. There's a right and wrong side to print on with inkjet film positives, and some of them will be tabbed. Like this non-waterproof inkjet film has a little rounded edge, and that's a tab to guide you to put it in your inkjet printer. So with this one, we have a tab that tells us we put the tab in the upper right corner in our printer, and we're printing on the right side of the, of the inkjet film, okay? And the reason for that is, is that inkjet film is nothing more than clear acetate or clear film, you know, and it actually has an emulsion that's coated onto it. The emulsion is what receives the inkjet ink. So, if you print it on the side that does not have emulsion, it will run and bleed and never dry. Therefore, you have to make sure you're on the right side of the emulsion on the inkjet film positive so the inkjet ink can set in the emulsion and coagulate and dry up, okay? Now, if the inkjet film positive does not have a tab, there's a quick and easy way to tell which side is which. Your fingers, moisten them a little bit and touch it. The side with the emulsion will be sticky and tacky. The side without the emulsion will be smooth and slippery. Okay? Now, without further ado, let's look at the computer and just briefly discuss basic spot color artwork creation. Here is a very simple piece of spot color artwork. It's composed of shapes and text and a graphic in the middle okay you can see that each piece is a separate object okay and keep in mind that you know different software programs will work differently we're working in illustrator right now because that's what I use mostly and I'm the most familiar with okay so here is the text down here that forms catspit is actually not a font that's actually graphic objects that we created the font and we only created these letters to form cat spit. So that's not a font. It's actually an object, a shape. The URL is actually just a font. Okay. So this would be ready to go out to film positives on an inkjet printer with waterproof inkjet film. And we can print it just like this. It's ready to go. It reads right. It's a positive. And currently I have it set up on an 11 by 17 document. You see that? So I can size it up. And that's the other thing that's great about vector art is you can size it. Okay, you see that? Look, I can actually stretch and mutilate this thing. And you see there's no loss of detail. You see that? That's because it's vector, and you can do all this kind of stuff with it without having any problem, resolution loss. You can, you can distort it in so many different ways, or you can, you know, it's, you know, vector art is so dynamic and versatile. That's why we use vector art in screen printing, okay? So this design would be ready to go to film, Okay, so let's look at a couple other scenarios where we might have to do some artwork to some things or, or create some things. And I'll show you some simple ways to, to create some spot color artwork. Here is a simple shape that I basically got from the internet because this is a fleur-de-lis. 
it's a known object or a known shape. It's kind of like a coat of arms type thing or a crest or a shield type thing. And so I figured, you know, we could show you how to start with a simple object. Say you have a customer and they say, we have a team logo and we want, you know, we want the floor de lease and then our text. Well, this is pretty simple. So you have an object and this, this object isn't even fully traced and, and expanded quite uh, in Illustrator, but it's unnecessary to do that. We don't really need to worry about it because it's one object, it's one shape, and we're going to put the text in front of it. So basically I would choose my text tool and I would say go team or whatever we're going to whatever we're going to type. It could be a team name or whatever. And now you're going to size up the font and you can do it by the points, you know, up here you can actually drop down and make it big or you can actually with vector art you can actually just say let me scale that and just do it like this which is a little bit easier okay now one thing to you know do with with um, text is you know I always I always say use different text in other words take a look and use some interesting this kinda looks cool with the floor delete so let's let's see what this looks like all right, and I'm going to rotate it to make it a little bit slanted, okay, and we'll put it in here, say we want it something like this, who knows, we're just messing around today, so we'll go like that. Now you can see as a one color, spot color, the text bleeds or blends into the object that we have, so what do we do? Well, that's pretty simple, we got to look and see if we can put a stroke on the font okay and that's as simple as that so you have to look in your software for illustrator you can come right down here in the corner and you see this box that's the outline that's the stroke and then you just change it to whatever color you want we want it white now up here we can adjust the stroke weight or size see so you can see that certain strokes will adversely affect certain fonts all right so we're, we'll stay with the one point just for this little demonstration okay so there's go team maybe we could push it up a little bit you see how you lose the thin lines when you start to push up the stroke so these are things that you got to be aware of all right but there you go there's a little text and then maybe we want something down at the bottom and we're going to um, let's choose a different font all right just because just to show you that you can actually use two different fonts on the same design okay and you know add a little bit of creativity to it now you want to make sure the fonts are you know a little bit similar or kind of work together but you know again today I'm just showing you so here's here's another text object and again it's like it's in front of the floor de lease but we've got to add a stroke because you know we can't see it we can't delineate this on a one color print as, as a one color stencil none of this will delineate unless we put an outline around it like here okay so we're gonna go in here move it to white and there's the little outline Okay, so there's a simple way to create one color spot color designs with fonts and a, an object. Okay, so there's the fonts, and then here's our object. And that's it. So you can, you know, pretty simple. You know, just basically using clip art or objects that you find on the internet, okay, you can create simple spot color artwork. Let's take a look at some artwork that involves clip art. Alright, so now here we have a piece of clip art and it's a very simple piece of clip art, okay? So it's made of two parts. It's a ball, there's a black circle, okay? And then we actually have this these white spots that are in front, okay? You see that? So these two, these are actually a bunch of little objects that are grouped together and the ball is just one object and together they make a, a ball and this is supposed to look kinda like a kickball or any kind of generic ball really alright so one thing that I want to point out when you're working in spot color 
and you're printing straight from your software Illustrator or Corel Draw or what have you directly to your inkjet printer, the way you're going to get the best film positive on waterproof inkjet film is to tweak all the objects to 100% CMYK. Okay, that means that you have to make sure your color mode, see this here, is in CMYK. You're in a color mode of CMYK. And then the object you would choose, and you come over here to this little thing is one way to get in here. And it'll open up this window if it does. And right now, you can see it's 100% K. So if I, if I change the color a little bit like this, sometimes it, it takes a little working to get something to stick. I found, I don't know why, but, you know, sometimes you have to change it. So then we change it to 100% CMYK. You see that? So that's all you got to do, really. And then, bam, there we go. And that way, when it prints on the waterproof inkjet film, it's actually going to have red and yellow and, and, you know, all four CMYK colors in there, and it will create a much denser, blacker, more opaque film positive when you print it on waterproof inkjet film. Okay, so now let's proceed to talk about how we might add some design elements to this ball, say if we have a kickball team or something. Now that we've discussed converting your objects to 100% CMYK when you're printing directly from your graphic software to an inkjet printer, let's then suggest that when you create new objects, you're going to convert them to 100% CMYK immediately. So let's say if we have a team okay, cat spit kickballers, let's say. So right off the bat, we're going to go right in here and we want to adjust this to 100%. Okay, it's just a good habit to get into because then once everything's together, you don't have to try to go back and mess with it and, you know, try to get all the parts separate again and then convert them all individually. You just do it from the get-go and it'll be a lot easier for you. Okay, here's a kind of a roller derby font. Over here I'm going to use uh, scale and just do this a little easier. And we're going to distort this one a little bit for this. Okay, now, now you get, you also have to look, see how it looks, kick ballers. Is this really legible? Is this font legible? Uh, you know, not really. So maybe we want to change it. Okay, so those are all things that you need to consider when you're creating your artwork. Okay, don't just, you know, create it without thinking about how it's going to look on the t-shirt. Or even once you get familiar with screen printing, how is it going to screen print? Okay, so now here's kit. Uh, cat spit kickballers, so let's check, make sure we're still 100% CMYK, nothing changed by accident or anything, okay, and say we wanted, I want this to go over the ball a little bit, remember, now, we need to delineate this, so again, we choose the text, go down here to the, to the outline, oops, and we choose white, now it delineates it, and since there are some spots in here, we got to make sure that it goes into a, an area that's not going to be confusing and, and make it hard to read. Okay, so there it is. We put in cat spit kickballers. Now we want to add a little bit of a graphic element to this. Okay, so we're going to take, uh, let's not use that. Let's, let's use, let's see if I can get rounded. We'll use the rounded rectangle tool. And I'm going to make this like this. Now, we're going to change the fill to white. See that? Now we're going to change the outline to 100% black. CMYK. And by the way, K is simply black. Oops, I was in the wrong. <laughs> I was in the wrong. We want the fill white. Now I got to go out. Wait, what happened here? There we go. Let's see if this will do it. We want the stroke to be 100%. See, I was on the wrong part of the object. Let's see if that works. Okay, there we go. Alright, so now we can adjust the stroke a little bit, give it a little weight, and now the object, you know, it's in front of everything. So let's, up here, object, we're going to arrange and send it to the back. Okay? So there you go. See that? 
So now we have a little bit of a graphic element. Whoops, see here, make sure again that you choose the right element or the right part of the element. And we'll adjust that a little bit like this. Okay. So there we go. We have a little bit of a graphic deal going on there. And then, um, you know, we could maybe do something else down here, you know, and and use another type of element if we want. And this one, maybe we want this one in front, you know, like this, so that we have a little bit of depth and layering. And now we say maybe it's the um, Arizona League, if I can spell properly. Let's see. There we go. Now we're going to choose a different font again. Let's Let's scale this a little bit. Just a little bit, because when you change fonts, the scale can change on you too. So you want to really choose the font before you, you know, before you really manipulate the font. Okay, so get the font that you want, and then manipulate it after you you decide that that's what you want. And now, remember, we got to go in and make sure it's a hundred percent. Okay, there we go. So there's a simple design that I just slapped together, you know, and, you know, you can do any number of things with shapes, fonts, and clip art. Okay, so there you go. You've got font, you've got shapes, and then you've got the clip art, which if I pull this out, it'll, I didn't group it, so it left the uh, <laughs> parts of the ball behind. If you want to group it, you would select both of those and tell it to group and then when you pull it it's gonna pull everything so when you have a piece of clip art that you're gonna use like this it's a good idea to group it alright so there's a little design simple one color spot color design for screen printing here's another piece of clip art that's fairly simple and it's important to note that clip art may also be known as line art and you can see why this is a particular piece of clip art that would be referred to as line art, and it's much like a pen and ink drawing. It's positive, and it's all lines and white paper. Okay, so sometimes you can refer to clip art or screen printing spot color art as line art. All right, now we're going to take this simple doll. The doll's already grouped, and it's 100% CMYK, all right? So we're going to just add a few elements to make it look more like a doll. So, for instance, say the customer says, yeah, I like the doll, but it's got no face, and it looks like it's amputated arms and feet and stuff. So, well, you know, I don't have a whole lot of graphic skill in Illustrator, but this is something I can certainly doctor up with some shapes. Okay, so there I created a shape, and I immediately converted it to 100% CMYK. Now I'm going to copy it and paste it, because that was the eyeball, right? And I just made two little eyeballs. Okay? So there, the little doll, girl dolly has two eyeballs now. And let's do just a simple, you know, simple mouth. Very simple. You know, but also, you know, very simple, but in accordance with the rest of the art because the rest of the art is very simple. So you wouldn't want to do anything highly detailed with this piece of clip art because it would look funny. So, you know, adding a couple of shapes, we added a face. Now, let's try to add a little bit of a limb. Now, I just used the pencil tool to do that. You can use whatever tool might work good for you. And then I'm up here adjusting the stroke to match the rest of the drawing. See that? Okay, so I just made this little thing to kind of look like this. I really don't even know what's going on. Is this supposed to be her arm going behind her back? Who knows? <laughs> but now it looks a little bit more cohesive, right? But she's got no feet. So, again, we'll just take a simple shape and make some, like, Charlie Brown feet or something. And let's see, where am I? This is the filled. Will that... Oh, the fill. Okay, let's see. We got to change it and make it go to something. And then we'll tweak it to 100%, and hopefully the fill will go black, but it doesn't want to. 
Okay, so we gotta try to get this thing to go black. This is what I'm talking about. See? Sometimes just weird stuff, you know? I don't know why it does that. So we're gonna take... We're gonna take the... The stroke and just get rid of the stroke because I only want to deal with the fill. Alright, so again, remember that different software programs are gonna behave differently and have different menu functions and stuff, but for the most part, I'm showing you just what you need in the final product. So you're gonna have to learn how to use the software that you buy. I can't really teach you that because it's very complex and it could take a long time. So there again, CMYK, 100%, and there's the little foot, and we're gonna put it kind of in place where it might look okay, but it doesn't look right like that. So what I'm gonna do is send it to the back. Okay, see that? And now it looks more like a Charlie Brown foot or something, right? So there it is, a little foot. Now I'm just going to copy, paste that, and use the same object for the other side. And i got to send it to the back again. Okay, so there it is. So there, now we kind of made this a little bit more cohesive, and it looks a lot better. So now I'm going to group it. And now the whole object is a little dull, and it looks a lot better, right? Very simple, but it looks a lot better. So let's now take a look at what we might do to create a design out of this. All right, so here we have the doll ready to create a design out of. And this kind of looks like something that could be good for a school or kindergarten or something like that. So I might make something that looks like a chalkboard shape. Okay, and now it's important to note that when we talk about fill and stroke, this outline that you see here is considered the stroke. The inside of the shape is considered the fill. So currently we have no fill and we have a four point stroke. Okay, so this is fine for what we want to do here. It kind of looks a little bit like a chalkboard. I might beef up the stroke a little bit. Okay, and now we got to send the object to the back because it'll look better coming from behind the girl like that. See? So, now, we're going to add, you know, text elements. And at this point, honestly, for this design, I already know what font I would use, which I don't have on the computer. I would, I would use the chalkboard font, and you can easily find that online. I actually have it somewhere, but I know it's not... Uh, I think it's on my other computer, actually. It's not loaded on this computer, but I would use a chalkboard font. Again, the fonts are really important to match with the concept, you know. So, you want to try to use fonts that, that kind of go along with the concept that you're creating. You know what I'm saying? So, when you think of something like that, uh, a racing font or a chalkboard font, chances are it exists. So, you can go on the internet and search for fonts and, you know, try to find yourself an appropriate font for the design. Now, here I'm just scaling. All right, and um, we'll just use this font here for this, for the moment. Okay, Cat Spit School. And maybe, um, let's take the same... Now, oh, before we go on, remember, 100% CMYK, right? Because we don't want to have to come back, whoops, and change anything. So there we go. Now, when I copy and paste that, it's already 100% CMYK, and I can change it to screen printing. Okay, now, you can see that you have to consider a lot of things when you're putting together elements and consider what it looks like. So we're going we're gonna to work on this a little bit. Cat's Bit School Screen Printing. All right, we've got to add an of, right? But we're not going to use the same font. Let's choose a different font. Okay, so let's um, figure out what font we can use for of. So let's just type it in. And probably want to bring it up a little bit so you can see it. Its size, right? And now, let's see what we might use for this. Let's 
So a lot of the times you can spend a good amount of time going through fonts, you know. So artwork, you know, artwork can take a good amount of time. So it's always a good idea to make sure that you're you're compensated for it or that it the the cost of the print job, you know, pays for the artwork. Otherwise, you can you can actually spend a lot of time doing artwork and if you don't get paid, then, you know, that can really hurt the profit margin on a job. So, you know, keep that in mind when you're working with artwork and you're working with a customer you you know you need to make sure that you're compensated one way or the other for the amount of time you spend on art which can be tremendous okay so all right so this is just a simple design it would be a lot better with the chalkboard font but you know my computer is not capable of going online and doing that while we're recording <laughs> it'll crash so we're gonna just wing it with this for now and you know, there are different shapes that can be used. You know, we have a little star. We might put this on the girl's shirt. You know, or you could use little dots and make three buttons on there if you wanted to. Um, now, down here, you know, I don't know what shape could we use. We could use different shapes. Let's, let's see if we have, if we can get anything to do something cool. Let's, um... Let's see what we can make this shape do if we use, I think this is free transform. For some reason, my pop-ups aren't coming up right now. See, so it's free transform. Once you do that, use that tool, you can manipulate the, the design, the shape. <laughs> okay. So there's that. Let's see. It's a little big. You know, so here's another shape that we might try to use. Okay, so first off, I'm going to send it to the back. And then I'm going to move it where I want. Okay, and there, again, see that? The foot is blending in there. So what we would have to do is ungroup this so we can grab this foot and try to put an outline on it and see if that will let it delineate okay and you can see it made the foot a little bit smaller because it you know it adds that white outline so I'll beef it up and then let's see now you see that so now it has a delineation there okay so we can put this wherever we want <clears throat> maybe we want it something like this but uh, this shape, I don't like. I don't necessarily like that pointing out. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if we can shrink it down a little bit more. Okay, so there, there's another shape, and we have the little line in there to delineate. And now we can add some font or text in here, and we'll do the reverse of what we did here. So let's take a look at that. So before I go any further, I'm just gonna check and make sure that this is 100% because I'm recording this video I'm a little bit distracted so I forgot to do that right off the bat but you should get in the habit of doing that when you create shapes or set up fonts go immediately in and change it to 100% CMYK if you are printing straight from your graphic software to your inkjet printer okay so there we have the shape now we're going to put a font on top of that and um, I don't know. Let's say, what would it say at this point? Um, maybe it's the Phoenix District, okay? And I, I, will, I don't know how that font got up there, but you know what? I'll roll with it. And we're going to, it's bold, that's good. And now, because we're going to put it on top of this shape, we're going to make it white, because it's a reversal type of caper, okay? And for this, we want to bring this to the front. All right, so now we have this, and then you can see, see that? All right, so now we have to make it do what we want. And manipulate the font a little bit. And then position. 
Okay, and remember, I'm just creating this stuff out of my head, so obviously if you had information or concepts and everything, it would probably be a lot easier to, to be creative. I'm just kind of winging it and slapping stuff together. But if the customer came to you and had the font or text information and some kind of concept, that would help kind of direct you in what fonts to choose or what shapes to use or what, you know, generally what to do with the design. So you know the direction from the customer will help you quite a bit in uh, deciding what to do with the artwork okay so there you go that's you know another simple design at this point I would group everything so that I can you know move it around or do what I have to and um, you know if I had to size this now a little bit I could sometimes after you set something up and you size it weird things can happen so um, if it's possible at all, I would suggest sizing like the doll, the clip art, size the doll at the beginning and work to size all the way from the beginning to end. And that way you'll avoid any complications that you might have if you complete the design like we did here and then try to bring it up, you know, because sometimes weird things can happen. <laughs> okay. You know, for the most part, it should be fine because it's vector, like I said. So now we sized it, and it's fine. We're ready to go to film with that right now. If this was what we wanted to print, we would be ready to print this to film. Okay, and um, let's take a quick look at the print dialog and show you a little trick in there. All right, so if we're ready to go to film at this point, we're going to go to print. Now, remember different software is going to work differently. Okay, so the first thing you got to do, this is Illustrator, and the first thing we'll do here is, is choose the correct printer. Okay, now at this point, it's on 8.5 by 11 paper. That's fine for this demonstration. You know, we're not going to actually print this. I'm just going to show you what I do in order to get a very dense film positive when I'm printing straight from Illustrator to the inkjet printer. And, um, you know, just for simple spot colors, you really, you know, you don't need to do much more than that. So we go into the setup and we go into the preferences and um, we're going to pick, you know, for for the inkjet, waterproof inkjet film positive, I will take photo paper glossy. I'm going to say best photo enhance. We want it to be very sharp. And then you go into advanced and you turn off high speed. Okay, let me show you that again. And you always want to check that when you do stuff, it doesn't change other stuff because you know how computers are. Okay, so we had best photo, photo enhance, paper glossy, and then advanced. I went in here and I turned off high speed. I want it to print, take its time printing. Okay, so that's it. You know, and for different printers, it'll it'll be a different dialogue. So that's one reason why I don't teach how to use Illustrator, because first of all, I'm not an expert. And secondly, you know, it can vary from version to version and it can vary, you know, um, from software to software. OK, so. All right, so that's it. And it didn't it didn't stick yet because we didn't we didn't do it. We didn't print it. We didn't save it or anything. I just closed it. So there you go. Photo Paper Glossy, Photo Enhance, go to Advanced, wherever your Advanced tab is, turn off High Speed, say OK, and now, now it should be ready to go. You see it? So everything's still there. High Speed is good, good, print, and then we would say Print. And that's it. It's a positive. So we're printing it just as we created it in Illustrator. All right, so that's it. That's just a quick rundown for you on simple spot color artwork. Okay, so there you have it. There's a quick, very simple, brief summary rundown of creating simple spot color artwork for screen printing. And remember, this is going to be one of the most challenging parts of screen printing for you because you have to learn the graphic software, right? So you've got to allow for a learning curve in creating artwork and achieving all the different effects that you want to achieve in your artwork is going to take some time to learn how to manipulate the art and to utilize your graphic vector artwork software properly and to your advantage okay because over time you're going to learn what works best with screen printing and what doesn't so then when you get to that point when you create artwork 
you will know what to do and what not to do at the inception, at the creation of the artwork. Okay, so that's really important because once you have a better understanding of how screen printing artwork prints, then when you create your artwork, you can create it in such a way that you will not have a hard time on the press. You follow? Okay, so we ran through some of the printing settings and stuff like that, right? And I, you know, I apologize if I went through it really fast. You know, you have the DVD, so you can always rewind and, and watch the sections again. But here is the piece of film that we're going to work with on this instructional video and show you how to get this design onto your screen. Okay, so we last left off on how to print. So basically, once you do all those settings, you would click print. Make sure your film's in the printer, right side up, emulsion side up. To get printed on and you, you print it and then you're going to end up with a film positive just like this okay so i don't know take a quick look at this film positive and then we'll uh move on to the next part of the dvd all right and finally once your design is printed out onto the inkjet film positive it should look something like this this is an old one i've used this many times so it's a little beat up and a little dirty but it will still do the job. So we're going to use this today. But this is basically what you're going to end up with. This is considered an inkjet film positive for screen printing. And you can see that the artwork is printed positively just the same way it was set up in Illustrator, right? Okay, so that's it. So now we're ready to start thinking about getting this design onto your screen. Okay, so the next step we got to start thinking about is screen preparation and mesh preparation. Mm -hmm.